And as we are every week, now joined by senior producer from NFL Films, Greg Cosell, whose weekly segment is presented by Scott Lawnyard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. Well, Greg, it's been a lot of fireworks here the first three weeks on offense for the Bills. They hang a 40-burger on the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are they're in a bad way right now. They're in a Ooh. lot of trouble, but that's another story. Um, I was stunned, completely stunned, Greg, that Ryan Nielsen played right into the hands of what Josh Allen does best, which is slice and dice man coverage, and he's still going with man coverage calls in the third quarter. It was mystifying to me. Well, you know, it's funny you say that, and I, I certainly don't know Ryan Nielsen, and I, I do not say negative things about coaches, but he's a young coordinator. I believe last year with Atlanta was the first year he was a coordinator in the league, if memory serves me correctly, and he played a ton of man coverage. And actually, Atlanta was very, very good at it a year ago. They just weren't a great team overall, but he they were very good at playing man. So he's probably learning and he's going to learn, but he's a man defensive coach right now. So that's his, his MO. That's the way he wants to play. And obviously he has injuries in the secondary. Campbell's not there. Um, so, uh, you know, it turned out not to be the right way to go. But I'm not sure that it would have been a dramatic difference with the way the Bills pass game is kind of put together now. And, and I think Joe Brady is doing a phenomenal job. He's making the game easier for Josh Allen. And there's yep. no quarterback that doesn't love completions and, and easier throws, even if they only get five, six, or seven yards. You know, well, the Bills are, you know, they're hanging 30 points a game. They're 34 in first weeks, 31 the second week, now 47, of course, against Jacksonville. Give us an idea what, you know, what's different about this year's, ver what do you see yeah. in film study, technically speaking about, what's different about this Bills offense this year? Why has it been so effective? Well, I'll tell you one thing that immediately stands out, and you saw it again this week. They they featured shifts and motions on 31 of their 39 first half snaps. I mean, that's what when we were dealing with the competitive part of the game, obviously. Um, so they had 39 first half snaps, motion on 31 of them. It's clearly a foundation of what he's doing. What also stands out in their past game is just how quick everything is. There are no read one read throw. So you're seeing quick swing routes, screen concepts off motion, easy throws for Josh with space for his receivers. Uh, and, you know, even if I mentioned the motion part, I mean, I think that um, uh, through three games, the numbers I have anyway, and maybe uh, they're different a little bit, but I have Allen 46 for 56, 10.3 yards per attempt with six of his seven passing touchdowns coming off motion. So motion has become a big part um, and because they get receivers open quick and, you know, they're not using motion necessarily to attack vertically. They're using motion just to get them into space quickly. And then the ball gets to them. I mean, we know Shakir is outstanding um, in that regard. So is Samuel and so is James Cook. They have receivers that are really good in space. So you're playing to their strengths and, and it just really helps a quarterback so much. Yeah. I mean, through three games, I know the bills stand fourth in the league in use of pre-snap motion at a clip of just over 80%. The only teams ahead of them are the ones you would expect. San Francisco, Rams, Miami. Rams. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I yeah. and I think, and I think green Bay might be, third. might be green Bay, but yeah. yeah. Well, well, the Shanahan handle the floor school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, it's working for them in, in a big, big way. I'm just wondering, is there, it's a small sample size. Joe Brady's new to the league in terms of, you know, game planning against him and his preferences. Is there a point in time here where this offense doesn't look this easy to execute because people have a working knowledge of, of what course. their bread and butter stuff is. Yes. And that's where Joe Brady's background hopefully comes into play because don't forget, while he has not been a coordinator in this league very long, he didn't spend the year before he was at LSU, spent two years with Sean Payton. So he's very, very familiar with that offense and everything that goes with that. So you'd have to believe, uh, and this doesn't mean there won't be issues. You, both you guys know it's the NFL. As Steve said before we started talking, it's a week-to-week -week league. You never know, and they've got three really difficult road games coming up. So you can't, you know, we're not on the Super Bowl train just yet. You know, it's a long way to go, you know, and, and there'll be some, some bad moments. That's just the nature of the league. But I'd like to believe that Joe Brady has in his background from where he's been some other things. Uh, so when uh, teams start to take some things away, he doesn't just keep, you know, banging his head on the wall. He has some other things in his arsenal. 
Well, let's talk about the Baltimore Raven defense. The one he's going to oh. face this week. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's not. I was telling Brown, it's not the Ray Lewis two thousand Ravens. It's a new defensive coordinator. Uh, what what are the Bills offense? How do you see these two? You know, Raven defense, Bills offense meshing together. Yeah. What do you think it's going to look like? I'll tell you what. It, it, watching their offense this year has been. Uh, it, I'll say tedious, not in a bad way, but it takes me a long time because they are incredibly multiple with their use of personnel. They are incredibly multiple with their front alignments. With Kyle Hamilton, they have, to me, he's the most important player on their defense because he's the one who allows them to do all these things. They play conventional nickel. They play big nickel. They play dime where they play with three corners and three safeties. They play dime where they play with four safeties and two corners. They're incredibly multiple with what they do. Um, and Zach Gore is, is a rookie D coordinator, but you can see the Mike McDonald effect is still there. I mean, I saw Blitz this week that was right out of the Mike McDonald playbook. Um, so it's, you know, he's probably you look every coach when they're new, they, they want to put in some of their stuff, but you know, he's smart not to mess with the fact that they were the number one defense in the league a year ago. And to me, they're a difficult defense to play against good players in a really good scheme. That's really multiple. So would you say the 17 plays of 20 yards or more that they have given up, which leads the league was skewed by last week's game against Dallas? To some degree, because I watched that tape and, you know, I made it into the third quarter and I'm thinking, gee, I'm getting close to the end of watching this game. And then all of a sudden I get to the fourth quarter and I felt like there were 50 Dallas plays in the fourth quarter. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. So I don't want to say it's skewed. You know, look, there are a lot of good defenses that are tough to play against that still give up plays. Um, just by the nature of how they play, because there's pressures, there's man coverage in this league, that's going to happen. You know, we, we had briefly mentioned before we came on talking about the Vikings um, and the fact that they are, they are an incredibly difficult defense to play against with Brian Flores, uh, but they still give up some big plays. So defenses do give up plays, but that doesn't make them any less difficult to actually game plan for and to go against because there's going to be negative plays when you play defenses like that. Let's talk a little bit about the other side of the ball for the Ravens. Of course, Derrick Henry and Sean McDermott said during the run-up to this game, he thought that the Derrick Henry pickup by Baltimore was a, an absolutely brilliant signing for them. Yeah. Uh, it gives them legitimacy, uh, gives them even a stronger running game and legitimacy aside from Lamar and for all those reasons. what do you? Let's talk about this Ravens offense. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is going to be uh, have the uh, – I don't know if, if the um... – Bills this year, and, and this has been the case, ha, ha, that they played any snaps of quote-unquote base defense. So we know what the Ravens are offensively. I mean, last week they had 16 snaps of 21 personnel, 13 snaps of 22 personnel. They they don't play much with, with three wide receivers on the field, but when they do, it can be explosive. Um, but the Henry factor is really, really big here. Um because you have what what works off the Henry factor when he in the shotgun, and now Henry's become a shotgun back in Baltimore, not, not an eye back like he was in Tennessee. So it works off that, and you have to be really aware of, and I'm sure they will be, but it's one thing to practice it during the week and another thing to do it in the game, is the zone reads. The Cowboys got killed by zone reads last week, and it just seemed like they may have been prepared, they may have practiced, but when you see it happen at that speed with the speed of the quarterback, it's just a really difficult thing. Now, I know that they've had good success against Lamar in the past, that Sean and, and staff have done a really, really good job, but every year is different, and Henry just adds another element to a run game that's obviously been really good over the years, but Henry's just a different kind of back. All right, so you mentioned the usage of 22 and 21 personnel last week by Baltimore, but in week two, they go 43% 11 personnel yeah. and go, you know, 52% uh, 12 personnel in week one against the Chiefs and, you know, a lot of short passing. Yeah. What are the Ravens? I mean, did the, were they so successful in week three that they'll be like, well, this should be our bread and butter. We ran for 274 yards, or are they going to keep, continuing to spin the dial do you think i realize I think, it's game i realize it's yeah it's opponent specific but yeah and it's we don't really know that interesting yet, brownie that's a great yeah. point we don't know that yet because i think uh you you mentioned uh, th those numbers i think last week um you know uh, ricard i think played 32 snaps against the cowboys but only 19 against the chiefs and 18 against the raiders so you're right 
through three games, you know, we don't necessarily have their exact template, but we do know they will line up in meaningful snaps of base personnel. Although, as, as I think we all agree, Cam Lewis has played outstanding football and he's almost been kind of a hybrid slot linebacker, the way in which he's played and the which in the way in which they, they uh, deploy him. Because there are times based on the offensive personnel and formation where he's basically a stacked linebacker and he does fine. So he's been a really key player. He's a bigger man than than Johnson, even though Johnson's a great slot corner. Lewis is a bigger man. Um, so we don't know for sure. I don't think we know the answer to that. It's only been three games. And and look, I can tell you for a fact that Todd Monken wants to be more in 11 personnel. I know that from speaking to people. It's just that Lamar's really comfortable with Ricard out there and with the offense when they have, you know, the big people out there. So I think it's a balance. I think they work because your quarterback has to feel comfortable. If your quarterback's not comfortable, you got nothing. So, you know, I think they're trying to work that out because they brought Monken in really to expand the pass game, but Lamar is really comfortable with the, with the heavy personnel. All right, so let me take that a step further because the Bills in their last few matchups under Sean McDermott against yep. Baltimore, 70% zone coverage against, yes. Lam- against Lamar, but Lamar right now is the league's highest rated passer against zone coverage right now with a passer rating of 120.3. Is it still going to work? Yeah, I don't think that'll change because that's what the Bills are. The Bills are a too high safety as, as their foundation. Again, saying this, I I don't want people to think this is what they do 99% of the time. Nobody does anything that that is that kind of high percentage. But at their foundation, the Bills are a too high shell defense that predominantly plays zone. Okay, now I don't really see that changing because the one thing about playing man against Lamar Even if you spy him, he's going to be faster than anybody you spy him with. Because I assume the linebackers, again, Bernard's already been declared out. So you're going to have Spectre and Williams. Now, Williams happens to be a really good athlete, but still, it's Lamar. I don't think you're going to spend a lot of time playing man when it's third and seven. Because he's going to, you know, he'll take off and he'll beat you. So you're going to see zone and... You know, if he makes great throws, you got to tip your hat. But I don't think you're going to see a lot of man on those high leverage, critical down and distance situations. What about the what do you think that the Ravens want to do at their core? I mean, they they got into a Chiefs game. It, it ended up being 27, 20. Right. It threw the ball 41 times, which yeah. seems out of character to them. Yeah. You know what? How does that fit in with? where yeah, they want to go and how much was that the Chiefs forcing him to do that that's you know Steve it's funny and that's why I, I say all the time and I'll say it to you guys it's three games and every year is different so it's hard to know exactly what their template's going to be now granted they got ahead reasonably big last week against the Cowboys so Lamar only had 15 pass attempts now 15's on the low end 41's probably on the high end my guess is if they had their exact proper game plan he'd probably have you know in the 30 drop back range. Okay. And then, you know, obviously he's going to run some, even when he drops back, but that would probably be my guess as to where they want to be in terms of the run game versus his dropbacks. But we don't know, you know, it becomes game specific um, at this point. Now, maybe in three, four more weeks, obviously we won't be discussing the Ravens in three, four more weeks, but then we'll have a better sense of what their profile is. I'm not sure we know that. And then it depends on how the game plays out. You know, if 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 the um, Bills can get off to quick starts, which they've done this year and did not do last year at all, uh, rarely, then sometimes that changes the game for a coordinator. Because let's say you go up 14 nothing, even though everybody says, oh, that doesn't change anybody's game plan. You guys both know that there's a mental part of that that just settles in, even for the coordinator. You know, because if you hand off and you get two yards, you start to think, I don't really want a two-yard game. We're down 14 nothing. You know, it just changes the way you see the game, even if it's only late first quarter. So I think the game flow will dictate a lot of that. Bills have uh, the best first down defense through the first three weeks. Part yeah. of that might be due in part to the fact that they haven't played juggernaut opponents yet. But how much can their play on first down really kind of force the hand of Baltimore's offense? Steve is Steve is saying they should be forcing them to throw the ball, put nine in the box if you have to, and see what Lamar wants to do. Um, I'm just encouraged that the Bills have been very good on first down with defense. Yeah. Well, I and and again. I, in the summer is when I speak to coaches, you know, just because I watch tape and I sort of like to validate, you know, what I see. And 
sometimes they'll tell me I, I they see it differently and sometimes they say hey you're right on the money you know so more often than not i hope but uh but i think that most coaches will still say that they'd rather see lamar in the pocket than out of the pocket i mean i think you know he's not a bad thrower we're not saying he can't throw the football that's not the point but i think that he's viewed as being uniquely dangerous out of the pocket there's he's still that special guy then there's no one quite like him in the league when he gets out of the pocket um so i think the feeling is just what you said uh, brownie that you want him to have to throw the football you want monkin to call pass plays based on how the the uh, bills are lining up you know with their defense that's what you'd like now having said that you can also get burned you know, the last thing you want is to give up a 60 yard touchdown. So that's the balancing act for a defensive coach, because you're not dealing with a guy that can't throw it. It's not like, oh, this guy can't throw. And they do have speed on the outside. Flowers is dynamic. Aguilar is not a volume target, but he can run. You know, even Bateman has some speed. They've got some speed on the perimeter. Right. And that's and that's basically even though with they've got the talented guys outside, Mark Andrews and likely inside as well. Yeah, that's the thing. They're you'd good still, too. You'd still rather have the ball in their hands than Lamar's hands. I think coaches feel that way, but you know they have a lot of weapons. I mean, just like you said, even if they go with with uh, you know let's say twelve personnel, two tight ends, both likely and Andrews can detach from the formation and basically play like wide receivers. So there's a lot of formation elements here in addition to just talent and individual elements and you know and that's another reason i think you'll see more zone steve because if you play out of a two shell you don't have to respond to motion you don't have to get crazy about formations because it's a balanced defensive look you never have to worry about changing the strength because you've got a four across umbrella look so you don't have to worry if the strength of the offense changes last one for me greg uh the running backs, all three of them for the Bills, have been pretty heavily involved yeah. in the first three weeks. They're scoring touchdowns. All three of them scored last week. Well, who didn't last week? But uh, <laughs> I guess the point I'm the point I'm trying to make is they're cycling them all through. They're all getting opportunities, and they're all have been productive. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that was probably the plan because, you know, Cook's clearly the number one back. Um, we know Davis is a totally different kind of bag. And I think games will dictate how much he plays, you know, the nature of a given game. Um, and Johnson, because and, I remember watching that kid in Maryland, he's, a, he's always been a terrific receiver. Um, you, you know, and, and I like Cook as a receiver, and it was a shame he had that drop last week. But Johnson even be a better receiver overall. So they're all different, and they all provide something. And there's packages, you know, certainly for Davis and Johnson, Cook's clearly number one. Um, but I think the game flow and the way a game plays out will dictate usage, particularly for Davis and Johnson. Last one. I just want to ask you a general question. What are the, is there, you know, if you think about the AFC, you know, what are the most big, the biggest surprises for you? I mean, is it Pittsburgh being three and O kind of thing? Is one it, offensive touchdown? They're yeah, 3 and Yeah. I mean, that's uh, some of the stuff that's going on is a little surprising. This, And I think the way the jets played last Thursday night, that's that's the team we thought they would be. And um, I think, see, I'm not surprised by the Jets because right, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. I mean, right. you know, I mean, t to me, Aaron Rodgers may be the best thrower of the football we've ever seen, just the way he throws a ball. Um, and he actually moved really well in that game, you know, which, which was kind of surprising, but he looked really good making throws on the move. Uh, and they've got a really nice one-two punch in the backfield. They've got good receiver. If Mike Williams stays healthy, they've got a really good receiving core. He'll make better use of Conklin, the tight end, than anybody previously with Conklin, because Conklin's a very good receiver. He just hasn't been a volume target in previous years in the league. Um, the Jets are a team, like I said, I wouldn't call them a surprise, but I think they're going to be a real interesting team to kind of watch. And and the Bills get them in, what, three weeks. And we'll see where the Bills stand, where the Jets stand at that point. But that's going to be a really big game, regardless of what happens in the next two weeks. All right, Greg. Thanks, as always, for the time. Appreciate it. We'll catch up with you next week. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All thanks, right. Greg. That's senior producer from NFL Films, Greg Cosell, joining us as he does every Friday in his appearance presented by Scott lawn yard uh steve i gotta we gotta take a break here uh but when we come back we've got some other things coming down the pike before we finish up for the week and uh you know among them 
tailgate Friday. I want to know what's on the menu. I don't care that it's a road game. Bills Mafia, let us know what you're cooking up. So we'll get to that when we return here on One Bills Live, presented by Collider Health. It's Buffalo Bills Radio. 